Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I accurately set out my spindles when doing uh, landing returns like this between a handrail and a base rail and what I like to do is we have a measurement here in the UK that the gaps between the spindles mustn't be any more than 100 millimeters and um, that's for building control so basically what we do is we um, we put the spindles into that spacing now what I don't like to see is when basically say we started from this end with a hundred mil spacing and get all the way to the other end and you know there's an odd spacing or the um, the spindle ends up being tighter to the newel what I like to do is space them out accurately so I'm going to show you how I do that it's pretty simple so to start off what we've got to do here because this is a bit of an add-on um, this house has some work done on it so we've got a, um, a gauge to already go to so what we're going to do is measure the distance between there because I think this is slightly less than 100 mil um, and we want these ones to match but as I said I want them to be a nice equal gap all the way along now there's 18 spindles going in here so we've got enough there's enough spindles that we can adjust the gauge by a couple of millimeters to get it to fit exactly if it was a much smaller run you might have a little bit more difficulty and you may well have to keep the spacing at whatever you want and have an equal gap say maybe you had a smaller gap here and a smaller gap that end but again longer runs like this you can gauge it out so you get it more or less perfect or perfect enough that then you're not going to know that the spacings may be a couple of mil different um, so first things first we need to measure our overall distance from newel to newel right here we go down on the knees so just measure between newel to newel and we've got here 2390 so let's, let's write that down 2390 okay and now what we're going to do is as I said earlier we're going to check the gauge of the spindles we've already got so here we're looking around 89 millimeters so we're hoping for, for roughly a sort of 89 maybe 90 millimeter gap in between here to make it match so we've got 2390 in between these two newels and we know that we want around a roughly 90 mil gap the issue is we need to subtract a, a one gap so we need to subtract 90 mil from this 2390 and then we can divide it um, and work off a center measurement because we know we're going to the right side of the spindle each time so if we take if we pretend that the newel at that end, I don't know if you can see me pointing it, the newel at that end would be the left hand face of a spindle. I know it's a newel, but we can take it from, from a measuring perspective, we can pretend that that would be a spindle. And then, so we come all the way along, and if we take that 90 mil off, that gets us to the left hand say, side of the last spindle as well. So once we've got that measurement, in this case it's really, really easy, we've got 2390 minus 90, which is 2.3 meters. So now what we need to do is we need to find out, if we're going to divide that up, we need to find out what our ideal gap is plus the thickness of our spindle. So I know that my spindles in this instance are 35 mil thick, so we add the 35 mil to the 90 mil and that gets us 125 mil. So basically, in terms of dividing it up equally, we need to divide 2.3 meters equally by 125 millimeters. So let's get onto the calculator and do that and see what figure we come up with. What we're aiming to get is a number, a round number of how many times that divides. And it'll be, it's unlikely it'll be an exact number. We'll get close enough to that number and then we can divide 2.3 by that number and it'll give us an exact uh, millimeter measurement. So I hope we can see that. I'm trying to do this sort of from behind the camera so the angles aren't great. So like I said, we've got 2390, two, then minus 90 mil, which is the size of gap that we want. Um, and then we know that that leaves us with 2.3, which is to the left hand side of each spindle and the last uh, half newel. We know that a gap of 90 mil plus a 35 mil spindle ends up being 125 mil. So we're going to divide 2.3, uh, 2,300 by 125. So let's do that. If you can see that on the calculator, yeah. 2,300 divided by 125 millimeters equals 18.4. Right, so we can't have 18.4 spaces, but we can have 18 spaces. So what I'm now going to do is um, I'm going to write 18. Just put a divide there. I know that's not, and we're going to write 18. So now what I'm going to do is divide 2.3 by 18. So let's clear that. So 2300 uh, divided by 18 equals 12.7 recurring. So let's just knock that down to 12.7, shall we? Right, here we go. 
So that is equals 12, uh, sorry, not 12.7, 127.7, okay? So now we know that each space plus the thickness of a spindle is 127.7 millimeters. And we know now that if we start that from the end point, by the time, if we start that from that half newel, I should say, by the time we get to the left-hand side of the last spindle, we know that it'll leave 90 mil between that spindle and this full newel. So I hope it's not too compl complicated. So what I'm gonna do now to make it um, so that I don't, what I'm not gonna do is technically now just minus uh, 35 mil from that 127.7 and then cut all my packers to that size, whatever size that would be, what, so quick, I should know that. Uh, minus 35 so I'm not going to cut all my spaces you can see there I'm not going to cut all my spaces to 92.7 because with the best wheel in the world they've only got to be half a millimeter out and then by the time you get five or six in you're going to start getting out so what I'm going to do here um, is I don't know I'm sort of waffling a little bit here what I'm going to do here and most calculators will do this I'm going to add 127.7 to itself and then just do that uh, recurring 127.7 and then go equals, so 255. And then what I do now, and this is the easy bit, I now set it out, it's like setting out a rod. Let's see if I can do that. And you can see it. I'm not, I'm not the world's best cameraman, I'm afraid. Uh, let's have a look, can we get that in there? Let's have a look. No, not really. Let's have a look. Yeah, just, that's it, I think we can see that. So, so basically what I'm gonna do is put my tape out here. And we know that our first mark goes at 127. So I'll put that mark and then put across because we're, we're, we're marking from the newel now. It doesn't matter which, which end we mark from now because the, the 2390 measurement is a constant. So we go 127 and then we put across to the left hand side of that. Then we press equals and the next one is 255.4. Uh, so we put that mark in there, put a cross on there. And then if I just angle that up a little bit, what I do now, if you can see the calculator here, you see that? I just press equals, and you see it's given me 383. So I just come along where it says 383. I put a mark there. Again, most calculators do this. Uh, press equals again. What we've got there, 510. So pretty much I'll do that uh, all the way along. I'll do that all the way along there. Um, I'll do that all the way along just carry on equals, equaling the calculator and then I know as I'm putting my spindles in although I will cut my packers 92.7 or whatever I said I'll know that I can keep an eye when I'm fitting the spindles um, sorry, I'll keep that eye. when I'm fitting the spindles you just see, keep an eye on these marks here and I'll know if I'm drifting so I hope I've made sense of that and what I'll do now is cut my spindles cut some spaces and start putting them in some spindles and I've cut some packers I don't cut all my packers like I said maybe just cut four at a time um, and I can start putting the spindles in keeping an eye on the marks that we put down earlier now one thing I'll say that we need to be careful of is obviously if our space is the same top and bottom we need to make sure that our newel is upright in this uh, instance it is uh, but that's something you need to keep an eye on because if your newel was slightly out which can happen obviously we need to make adjustments for that on either the top or bottom packer before you get going what I do is every four or five anyway, I've got a little 600 level and I just check that they're plumb so you don't get out because uh, there's nothing worse, especially when you've got a staircase like this one, you can't see over there at the minute, but where you've got um, lots of vertical spindles, if you get some that aren't upright against some that are, uh, it, the wind, you can wind them in by iron, it looks absolutely terrible. And it's the sort of thing that you only see uh, once the whole job's finished and you start using it. So uh, let, let's put, uh, I'm just gonna use PVA here as well. I'm not going to show too much of this because it's probably going to be a bit boring. But just I just use a bit of PVA on that packer there. Um, same on the top one. And then I think, as I said many times, PVA is an absolutely fantastic glue. And what I do, I don't like to see pins. So what I do on um, my spaces with oak, oak hands like this is I will just use masking tape to hold that uh, packer in place until 
the glue goes off. I put a tiny bit in the bottom of glue, and the tiny splodge on the top. I put that spindle in. There we go. One in. Let's, uh, let's do another one. Tiny bit on that edge just helps. Tiny bit of glue against the spindle as well, just to stop those spindles rattling because there's nothing worse than loose spindles. Lovely. Okay, a bit of masking tape. I'm going to run out of this. you in and uh, see how we're doing on our marks. Lovely. Okay, right, let's have a look, we'll get this last spindle in, let's have a look to see how we're doing on our lines. I think, as I suspected, we're creeping a little bit, so, yeah, let's have a look. So, we're not much, but we're creeping a tiny, tiny bit, so I'll get the camera off and show you here. It's not much, but again, we've only got four spaces in there. If we've got another four, it'd be, it starts to add up. Um, I'll just show you, look. Yeah, so you can see, look, it's not much, but you can see, look, we're just, we're coming off the line. It's only a pencil width, but we're starting to come off the line a little bit there. So if I'd have cut all of these spaces, by the time we got four or five up, we start to get quite a few millimeters out. So what I'll do now is just uh, the next space where I cut, I'll just, leave it half a, I know it sounds madness, but I'll leave it half a pencil line thicker and then we'll keep on this gauge, uh, I'll leave it half a pencil line thicker and then we'll keep, we, we should keep on this gauge all the way down and then we don't get too far out. And we know that when we get right back to this last one here, that this last one will be 90 millimetres, the gap will be 90 millimetres from this spindle to that half new one. So there you go, uh, all of those spindles went in absolutely perfectly. As you can see, we've got a nice even gaps all the way down here um, and they all look the same. Now what I will do, and again, this is, I'm probably gonna give my secret away here, is although when we set out, we were looking at whatever I said there was, look, um, we were looking, can you see that measurement there on the side of that spindle? We said 127.7. Um, which leaves us a sort of 93 mil gap. Um, when I get to the end, because we, the mass we did, if you remember, we just took 90 mil off. So this end space here, if we have a look, where are we trying to do this? Look, can you see there? That end space is still 90 millimeters as opposed to whatever that is, 90, I can't, sorry, 92, 93. So yes, 
that end space, hang on, yes, uh, this end space here isn't technically the same as these, but you can't really tell that, can you? And I would much rather that all those have a nice gap, including the ones on the end, rather than just sort of starting, you know, 90, 99 mil from here and ending up with a really odd sort of small space here. So there you go, I hope uh, you've been able to follow uh, my little guide on how to, um, I can't even, not very good, I'm not very good at pointing the camera at myself and trying to get what I'm talking about in the background, so let's just uh, flick it round. Yeah, so I hope you can understand the way that I mark that out and that pretty much, apart from a couple of mil difference on the end there, all of these, at first glance, they're all set out the same and they all match everything else. So, um, I hope you found it interesting and been able to follow it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching.